Hello, my name is Kostas Jalitakis. I work as the technical artist teacher at the Game Assembly in Malmo, Sweden. And this video is part of a series of videos called Getting Started with Shader FX for Maya. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a naive matcap shader FX shader. Naive in as there's, it's a simple, simplified implementation. Uh, and I'll show you a bit later what that's about. So to get started, I've chosen this example mesh. It's a free mesh from Lee Perry Smith. I found it to be a good case object to use for this type of shader. And I've just created a new shader FX shader on this one. So I'll go ahead and hit open shader FX. I'm going to start from scratch. So I want to delete these. Remember, you need to be in advanced mode to be able to delete them. And once again, I'll create my base shader, which will allow me to, like the core set of shaders, just to be able to output color. If you're not familiar with this one, view my earlier episode called Bare Minimum Shader and Saving Custom Shader Groups. So the first thing I'll add is a texture map, because essentially a matte cap is just a texture with some magic uh, that you use for the coordinate lookup. So if you're not familiar with matte cap, it's the type of shader that you see, like the default materials in ZBrush or something, where they might look as if they have lots of reflections and light and whatnot, but it's it's not that there's placed lights or an environment in the scene. It's just a static spherical texture which represents uh, that, that lighting and, and reflections. And it's also following the camera as you rotate around. You'll see in a bit. So the idea here is that we want to drive the lookup of this texture using the world vertex normals. Is vertex world normal, sorry. So this is a matcap. I've actually, with this specific example, I've intentionally broken it a bit. Go ahead and show you what it looked like before when I opened it initially, like so. So ideally you want that matcap to be a perfect sphere which is touching the edges of the texture. So if I pop back to Maya, I want to drive the lookup of this texture using the normals of the model. So just to get started with showing color on my mesh, I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like if I just plug this in and we uh, have a look at the color in the viewport. So if I hit number six now, it seems to be missing something. The world normal goes to the vector. This one goes to, oops, sorry, yes, of course. It should go to the, yes, I am confused, vector construct. This is what I want. Right. There we go. Okay, so these are the world normals. As you can see, they are pointing in each represent, each axis's direction, right? That means, sorry, uh, the X positive will look red, the Y positive will look green, and Z positive will look blue and they will blend into each other. There's also the negative side of things where I have negative X, negative Y, and negative Z. But the problem with these now is that I want to have them always following the camera. So to do that, here's where the naive part comes into the, the name of this shader exercise. I want to use the view matrix to transform these into view space. I'll show you later what it, this visually means, the, the, the naive part of it. And for uh, the tech savvy, you might already realize what the issue is by doing this, but we're not accounting for the perspective of the camera by doing this. But either way, it's a good exercise and it'll still result in something visually pleasing. So I'll show you what this, this uh, will give us. So if I now have a look at this value instead, and I output this as color, you'll see that the colors are moving with the camera. Notice how I never see any dark negative part, right? And the red is always going to be on the right side of, of the objects and blue on the left side and etc. Green from the top and right. So this is what I want. I want that matte cap to follow along as I rotate the camera like this. So next part, which I'm going to do, is I'm going to view the individual components here to prove a point. So if I grab vector component 
and let's say I only want to look at the, the red component or the X component of uh, this normal vector. Let's see, I forgot to output this is common. There we go. No, sorry. Uh, since this one was plugged in before, this one takes precedence over, over these. So I need to disconnect these to get these being the color. There you go. So you see it's following along the camera and it's X axis in view space not by now. So what we're actually seeing here is on this side and the extreme where the surface is uh, bending away from the camera here, I have a value of minus one. Where the terminator line is here, it goes from minus one to 0, 0, 0.0 and then 1.0 over here. Now, my intention is to use these as UV coordinates for, for looking up in this texture. And if you're familiar with UV coordinates, you usually want them to sit between 0 and 1. So I'd want ideally this part to be 0, 0.0 and this part to be 1, so it gradually goes from 0 to 1. But currently I have minus 1 to 1. And this holds true for the other directions as well. I could show you what y looks like as well. So y is going to be the other part of this um, feature, which is going to drive the lookup in this direction. So the x, vec x part of the vector drives this lookup direction, and the y drives this one. So what we do need to do now is get rid of that negative part of this and, and have it just from 0 to 1 instead. So to do that, there's two different ways that I know of. It's simple with just some, some math. I could either add and then multiply or multiply and then add. It doesn't really matter. It'll give you the same results. So if I multiply first, I would want to multiply by 0 0.5. So I'll grab a float. I input this here and I set this one to 0 0.5. So if you follow along, I've got minus 1 to 1 here. If I multiply that by 0 0.5, which is I, I slash it in half, I'll at this point have minus 0 0.5 to positive 0 0.5. After that, I want to go ahead and add 0 0.5. So Remember, negative 0 0.5 to positive 0 0.5. And if I add a half, I will now have 0 to 1. You can do it the other way around by adding first and then multiplying as well. Um, just for, for your information, there are al already existing groups for doing this. Even though it's a small thing, it's, it's a very common thing. So they have added uh, nodes for doing this. And they are called expand, expand range and collapse range. And if you have a look inside of these, you'll see that they are essentially, not sure why they're called normal map, but there's a multiply and an add, for instance. So um, I, can, I can go with my solution here, just to show you. So if we now have a look at the color, it's now Y. And remember, this one is now black and it goes to white. Previously, I had minus one here, I had zero, at a surface which was pointing right at me, and then positive one when it's going away from the camera in this direction. Right, and same for x. I've now shifted the space from minus one to one into zero to one. So we could, at this point, just try adding these as my UV lookup for a texture map. So what that means is I now can get rid of these. I grab the, the texture map and I grab the color component from the texture into the vector construct. I will now choose a matcap texture, and I found a, a, a free um, pack of these by some, some user who added them. Um, says, says Spider, yep. And there, there's tons of them to use. So I'll just grab any one of these and, uh, sure, and shade, for instance. So it should look something like that on my model, ideally. Now what I want to do now, remember, I want to have the X part driving this lookup and the Y part driving this lookup. So I can actually use the XY, the combined one here, and just feed that into the UV. Now this one won't look all that great, but if I look at my model, it'll look like this now, which is essentially what, what we're looking for. One thing to do, though, is since these are considered uh, screen space, uh, no, sorry, 
sRGB or, or gamma textures to get the correct color representation you need to on the texture map click convert to linear space that's a whole different topic in itself but the, the key thing I try to remember at least that's my way of, of explaining this is if it's a, if it's an image which was painted by by an artist where you chose color based on what is aesthetically pleasing it's in gamma space if it however is like a more mathematically generated texture say um, an uh, ambient occlusion or a normal map or maybe even considering roughness you want to keep it in linear space and then you do not want to click this one so notice how how this now is appearing darker and if i uncheck convert to linear space it's brighter but that dark is actually more representative of um, how this representation was as well, right? So this this is the, the results you want. Now, if I go ahead and expose this texture, and we could call it at cap, I should be able to access it uh, in the interface here. And just for the, the, the fun of trying this out, we could choose a completely different one just to see what that looks like. Now there's tons of these you can find online, and I'll leave it up to you to find more of them. Um, but but just to choose something different to show you. I'm not sure what this one, for instance, should look like some kind of chrome ball. Yep. All right. Um, so one more thing I want to show you regarding this is uh, I actually manufactured a, a, a incorrectly formatted map cap, if you will. The problem with this one is, and this was not in the pack to begin with, let me be clear with that, this is a manufactured problem by myself here. Um, it's not touching the edges. The sphere should be touching the edges here to not get any artifacts. If I choose this one and I show you what that looks like, you see that you have this white area here. Now, it could also almost to some degree look pleasing as if there was some rim light, but let's try it on a sphere as well to see what that looks like. Right, so like this. Now I'm not necessarily saying that, that you'll come across matte caps like this, but I have found some of them. And I think it's a nice exercise for me to show yet another uh, set of nodes and combination of nodes to solve this issue in shader FX. And since we're looking at this, I'll show you the, the naive part about this shader or the, the thing I mentioned early on. If you pan the camera like this, notice how the red area floats around and this white part gets wider shouldn't actually be doing that if, if it were to hold true to what a matte cap should be doing. This is, as I mentioned, because we're not accounting for the perspective of my camera. So it will look correct as I look dead on the object, like this point, but the more it goes to the edges of the camera and the, the higher my perspective field of view is, the more this error will show itself. It's it's not a big deal. I'm not sure if you would have noticed uh, if, I, if I hadn't mentioned it or if I hadn't shown these uh, errors, but uh, I, I did want to mention it though. So back to the issue at hand. I want to solve this, this issue. Now, the way you would go about doing this, if you have a look at this one, and I'll actually go back to, to here, is that we're currently sampling the whole range from here to here and um, my zero point is here to the very left and my one point is here my, my one what i want to do instead is i want to set this to be the new zero around this area and this to be the new the new zero oops uh, here i might even go as far as to go a bit inside of the shape just to uh, have a bit of extra padding or safe margin if you will now I would call this feature or adding this type of functionality to add some padding and I would I think it would be easier to maintain uh, it could be different depending on how the image looks but to have the same padding distance here and here so I'd want to shift it so this is the new 0.0, .0 and this is the new one so if we were to do this on paper I currently have 0.0 to 1.0 and I want to shift this to, let's just grab a value because let's say that this distance equals 0.1 in length. And this is also 0.1. I want to shift my 0.0, .0 into 0.1 to 0.9. That would give me 0.1 padding on the minimum and 0.1 padding on the maximum. Now, how do I go from this range to this range? 
Well, for starters, I mean, when I'm faced with a mathematical problem or challenge like this, I usually try to just look at the numbers and, and usually I instinctively I have some idea of how to get started and then I just try to find the pattern or or see what the connection is. And, and if I'm lucky, I'll, I'll crack it from there. So one thing I see, one simple idea could be that how about we just add 0 0.1 or my padding value. So if we say that x represents the current value I have now, which holds this range, I could write x plus 0 0.1 which would shift my range from zero to shift my range to 1.0 into 1.1, right? So that's the start. I've now got my my minimum uh, solved, but this one is too large. It needs to be 0 0.9. So how do I do that? Well, um, if if you try to see the difference between these numbers, you'll notice that to go from 0 0.1 to 0 0.9, you need 0 0.8. The math the math for getting there is taking your maximum value minus your minimum value will get you the length or the range between these, how many, how long between these numbers. And um, if I check the range between these, I can do that without writing the calculus, right? Is, um, is one unit to get there. So if I compare one to 0 0.8, what's the correlation? I'm using a padding value of 0 0.1 which should equate to shifting the range from 1 to 0 0.8. At this point, at least in my head, I notice that the difference between these two values is uh, 0 0.2, right? And 0 0.2 seems to be twice the amount of my padding value. So what does this mean? Well, it means that if I could grab my, my, my range of... Um, uh, 0, 0.0, 0, 0 to 1.0 and multiply that by 0 0.8 I would now have a range between 0 0.0 to 0 0.8 and if I grab this result and I add my padding this so I grab this row and I add my padding value to this equation plus 0 0.1 I would be at this instead. So that should be enough to uh, to, to manage my my uh, my desired results. And this value, I mean, these values are are um, hard coded, if you will. If if this is my padding value, which I can uh, change dynamically, if I set it to say a user driven parameter, I set this to 0 0.2, then this needs to update as well. And this one was the result, if you remember, by by um, uh, let's see, by by taking um, actually, yeah, sorry, I didn't actually um, show you how I got to this number. I mentioned it. I I take one point um, zero minus my padding value, which is zero point one, times two is going to equal the zero point eight. So to get to this value. I take my, the same value I have here, I multiply it by 2, and uh, then I take that result of multiplying by 2, I take 1 minus that result, gets me this value. So this one would need to be replaced by, let's go ahead and actually call this P for padding, and this one is um, 1 minus padding times 2. So Let's see if I have if the mathematical order or the order of equa calculation here, if it's going to be a problem. First, it'll multiply these two, and that is a problem. So I'd need to first equate this, add the parenthesis. That means it's first going to multiply, because multiply goes before minus. So it'll calculate this, then it'll take 1 minus the, this result, and then it removes the parenthesis, multiplies by x, and then finally adds the padding again. This should be the calculation I want to um, add to the shader network. So, let's see about doing that. So, I should be modifying the value in between here. So, if we work from the inside out, I will start with adding a padding value. Uh, I go for the innermost parentheses. I, I start with a padding value and multiply by 2. 
So the padding value is going to be a user-driven value. So I'll add a float. I will call this padding. And let's use my example number, 0 0.1. I will expose that. So here's my padding. And remember, we wanted to multiply that by two. So I might add another float. I'll grab a multiply node. And I multiply that by two. This one needs to be two. So I've now solved this part. Now I want to have one minus the result I already have. So to do that, you could uh, use a float value and a subtract node to do one minus. But there is actually already a pre-made node for this, which is invert one minus, which is essentially just taking one minus the value you feed in here. So that is uh, this part. So I take my, my number I have already, this result, and I use the one minus operation. So I am now done with this part. Next part is to multiply this with the range I have already, which is this value. So I need a multiply node. I need to multiply the value I have already with this value. And then lastly, I've done this part now. I need to add my padding value. So that is an add node. And I take this result and I add my padding value, which is this value. So something like this. Now, the pedantic part in me uh, would want to just move this around to not have cross lines. Won't matter for this result, but visually more pleasing. At least, maybe it's my um, um, my my uh, obsessiveness with this. But um, this should actually be um, now with having the padding here. If I replace this one, let's try it out, and the padding should be exposed by now. So I've got padding, and if I set that back to zero, see that I now have that white. Uh, error I don't want. As I gradually increase this value, you see that it starts removing that white part. I could even go ahead and do this, because this is one of my most extreme cases, and I set the padding to do this. Now I should be good. I shouldn't be getting any of that white. So the padding, I can now gradually, with the user value, set it to shift these around. And that will represent my new minimum value where it starts sampling. And stop sampling here and of course it does the same for the this uh, range as well so it would be something like this i guess right I'm not saying it's a common thing you'll come across with math caps but i i like this example and i'm showing you how to how to manipulate ranges in this fashion as well so that should be it i hope you've enjoyed this thanks